Good morning. It is December 8th, 2023. Happy Hanukkah to, to those that celebrated one of those times that God did a mighty work for the Jewish people. If you don't know the story of Hanukkah, it's a good story to read. God is a faithful God. But we're going to get now into his word. You've tuned in to Matt and Randy in the morning. We are here to encourage you in the word so that you can be strong in the faith and live victoriously in Christ. That is where true victory is found. In Jesus Christ, Yeshua Messiah, God Almighty, sent his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. What a blessing. What a blessing to know that even in all our messes with all our junk, God the Father wants to be in a personal, intimate relationship with us. That is what Christmas is all about, is God sending his precious son. Jesus walked this earth for 33 years, felt all the things that we feel, suffered, was mistreated, lied about, oh, all kinds of stuff because of his love for us, crucified, a horrible death. But he did it for you and I to be reconciled to God Almighty, to be restored to that place where nothing separates us from the love of God. That's what Christmas is about. Jesus rose three days later to prove to us that he has a power over death. There is nothing that will hold the child of God back from God Almighty, the love of the Heavenly Father, and the things that He is preparing for those that love Him, for those that seek Him from their heart. He's not looking for things. He's looking for our heart. We're going to be in 1 Samuel 17. Let's open up in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, as we get into your word, I ask that your Holy Spirit teach us, guide us, instruct us in the ways of righteousness, O oh Lord. Oh, may we hide your word in our hearts that we might not sin against you. Lord, may our hearts not deceive us, Father, but instead, Lord, cry out to you. Oh, understanding the love that you have for us. May we have ears to hear what your Holy Spirit wants to teach us today from you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. What a wonderful thing that the Spirit of God Almighty resides in the heart, in the life of every believer. Yesterday, we had gotten to the part where David was now confronting Goliath. I'm going to go back to verse 38 in Samuel 17, where Saul says, okay, if you're going to go out to battle, here's my armor. Go put it on. And he <laughs> has David put on this armor? You know, the world is going to want you put on the things that it thinks are the solutions. But you see, David was a man of God, a young man of God, I should say, because he was young, that had only known to trust the Lord. When he was out all by himself with those sheep out in the field and he had to defend them, he knew that the only way he could <laughs> win and do that was with God. You know, the songs that he must have sung to the Lord from his heart when he was by himself with his sheep. Time to think. You know, you think of David, his father, in, in, in 1 Samuel 16. I mean, his father didn't even consider him to come before Samuel when Samuel was looking to who it was that God had chosen to anoint. You know, oh, he was just the one son that was out in the field. Not even considered. Oh, but God knew his heart. God knows your heart. People may not understand you, but that's okay. God understands you. And that's what's important. So David tells Saul, I can't fight in this thing. And we're going to pick up now 
in verse second part of verse 39 he says to Saul I cannot go in these he said to Saul because I'm not used to them so he took them off then he took his staff in his hand chose five smooth stones so what did he do he took his shepherd's staff five smooth stones from the stream put them in the pouch of his shepherd bag and with his sling in his hand approached the Philistine Meanwhile, the Philistine, with his shield bearer in front of him, kept coming closer to David. He looked David over and saw that he was little more than a boy, glowing with health and handsome, and he despised him. He said to David, Am I a dog that you come to me at, at me with sticks? Remember, he had just his shepherd stick. And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. Come here, he said, and I'll give your flesh to the birds and the wild animals. And David said to the Philistine, You come against me the sword and a spear and a javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. See, David knew he wasn't coming to him in his strength. He, he said, I'm coming to you in the name of the Lord. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hands, and I'll strike you down and cut off your head. This very day I will give your carcasses of the Phil and excuse me I will give the carcasses of the Philistine army to the birds and the wild animals and the whole world will know there is a God in Israel once again David giving God the glory All those gathered here will know that it is not by sword or spear that the Lord saves for the battle is the Lord's and he will give all of you into our hands as a Philistine moved closer to attack him, David ran quickly toward the battle line to meet him. You know, I was thinking that we need to do that. When temptation comes our way, rather than letting it get close enough to strike us, we need to immediately run to the Word of God and say, No, I will not fall into that temptation. I have the Spirit of God within me. I'm going to run and defeat you right now before you ever get a hold of me. You know, and sing to the Lord. Put a praise song in your heart. Put scriptures in your heart. Say, no, that is the old me. That is no longer the new me. I am now in Christ, so I can stand victoriously against any enemy that comes against you, any Goliath that tries to confront you, any temptation. You can overcome by the Spirit of God that is in you, just like David has done with Goliath. It goes on and says, reaching into his bag, and taking out a stone, he slung it and struck the Philistine on the forehead. The stone sank into his forehead, and he fell face down on the ground. This big, mighty giant with all his shields, all the defenses that he had. Little stone. Little young man. By the power of the Spirit of God. Totally defeated him. And it says, so David triumphed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone. Without a sword in his hand, he struck down the Philistine and killed him. David ran and stood over him. He took hold of the Philistine's sword and drew it from his sheath. After he killed him, he cut off his head with his sword. He used his own weapon. What the enemy thought he was going to kill David with is what David used to kill his enemy. The ways of this world are not God's ways. You are not going to be able to overcome things in this world on your own. But with the Lord, you can. We are victorious in Christ Jesus. When the Philistines saw that their hero when the Philistines saw that their hero was dead, they turned and ran. I had written down now this. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. That is found in James 4. And if you get a chance, read James 4. There is so much in that chapter of James. The David's oldest brother had falsely accused David. Do you remember? You're going to have to read back if you haven't been listening for the past couple of days. Go back and listen to the story. David's oldest brother had falsely accused David. He did not know David's heart. The same thing happened with Saul's daughter. She was upset at David for the way he danced and worshipped the Lord when they had brought the Ark of God back in gladness. You can read that story in 2 Samuel 6. When you follow the Lord, not all in church will understand what you do 
and your heart toward the Lord. Some people just have religion, and it's hard for them to understand what it means to have an intimate personal relationship with God Almighty. We have to understand that and not allow offenses and bitterness to get into our heart. God knows your heart. Charlie Brown tree or nine foot fancy glittering tree is not what God excuse me is not what God cares about. It is your heart that he desires. Everything in this world is his to take. But the heart of man he will not take unless one offers it to him. That childlike love, no strings attached, just wanting to enjoy his company. And he says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. That is what matters. What others may think is between them and God. You keep a praise song in your heart and rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. So keep that praise song in your heart. You are victorious in Christ. Anything that the devil might throw at you, you can overcome. Not in your own strength, but because the power of God that is inside of you through the Holy Spirit of God, you are victorious in Jesus Christ. We'll see you tomorrow.